plant and animal adaptations from the New Canaan Nature Center. Hi everybody, it's Derek Hips again, uh, the Director of Animal Care here at the New Canaan Nature Center. Today we're going to be continuing our talk about animal adaptations. Today we have a really, really cool animal that I would like to share with you. Um, lots of people, well, either love them or they're a bit scared of them. <laughs> uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, this animal that we're about to see and talk about. Uh, we are going to be continuing with our theme here. So which habitat, um, which type of area would this animal uh, prefer to live in? Where, where would we find these animals? Why would we find them there? Let's see. What do you think? What type of animal are we talking about today? I'm going to give you some clues. This animal has no feet. <laughs> this animal does not have fur as a body covering. It has scales. Okay, any guesses? You're probably guessing and you probably guessed right off the bat when I said no feet and scales. Coming around the corner in one, two, three. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get him close to you guys so you can see. This is Nico. Nico the ball python. We would not find them here in Connecticut. <laughs> But there are actually 14 native species of snakes in the state of Connecticut. So the garter snake, the eastern hognose snake, the ribbon snake, the eastern milk snake, eastern rat snake, eastern worm snake, <laughs> northern black racer, northern brown snake, the northern copperhead, the northern water snake, uh, northern red belly snake, northern ring neck snake, the smooth green snake, and the timber rattlesnake. And you might be asking right now, are there venomous snakes? That's an adaptation that some snakes have, is having venom in their fangs. So they have those hollow fangs that can shoot out the venom when they bite. We only have two species of snakes in Connecticut that are venomous, the copperhead and timber rattlesnake. I've never seen either one of them on New Canaan Nature Center property. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, it's not like they're gonna jump out and bite you. They're not out there to hurt us. Uh, they're there to stay warm. They're there to find shelter. They're there to find food, water. They're doing the same things we're doing. They're just, they're living. They're trying to survive. The only time a snake will actually bite is when it feels threatened. So today we're gonna be talking about the adaptations that would help this animal survive out in the wild. Um, they don't have those adaptations that would allow these guys to survive here. Snakes are cold-blooded. If this snake right here, they typically live in Africa. They live in warm climates, right? If he lived here, it would be too cold for them. Uh, these guys, they do not brumate. You might know the word is hibernate. Reptiles actually uh, when they go to sleep for the winter, it's just called a different word. It's brumation, okay? So they sleep because it's just too cold. They cannot keep their body temperature up. Um, they won't be able to eat. They won't be able to move too much, so they just sleep. But these guys, they don't really do that. This species prefers to stay active, stay awake all the time. So this environment here, uh, this biome in which we live, in Connecticut, it is just too cold in the winters and falls, and right now, spring. It's been a cold spring. These guys would not survive here. Um, but let's talk about the adaptations that allow this snake to live where it lives in Africa. So, the first thing that I'm noticing and I'm feeling is the skin. What's covering its skin? I gave it away at the beginning of this video. Scales! <laughs> so the scales, they are their armor, they're their body armor, they protect their skin. So if they crawl against a sharp rock or a stick, those scales will protect their bodies. Uh, if you ever seen a snake shed before or seen a snake shed, uh, but they actually shed some of those scales, shed basically all their skin from their eyeballs, 
They have a, they do, they have a layer of skin that covers their eyeballs, so they shed that layer of skin all the way down to their tail. So they shed their whole skin. Uh, snakes are constantly growing. They never really stop their whole life. So that's why they have to continue to, to shed that skin because as their new skin grows and as their body grows, they have to get rid of that skin to stay healthy. Let's see, what else can we see here as far as adaptations go? Oh, he's sticking his tongue out at you guys. Is he being rude right now? Uh, but no, he's not being rude. He's sticking his tongue out. He is sensing for heat. He is looking for body heat because they eat live animals. They tend to eat mice. They tend to eat birds. Some snakes will even eat other snakes. This snake in particular would not. The ball python, they tend to go mostly the rodents that they'll find and birds. Um, I'm noticing here Let's see if we can get a closer look at his face. So the ball python actually has little tiny holes. Some people call these pits. Um, those are extra sensors that pick up heat. So this guy, he can actually pick up heat and, and sense where his food is. I, I can't do that. You can't do that. We don't have, um, we don't have that. Other snakes, they have at the top of their mouth. Um, it's, a little, it's a little nerve. It's called a Jacobson's organ. Um, so it basically picks up the heat of their prey. So every time their tongue goes out, and you can see them doing it now, <laughs> every time their tongue goes out, they collect that information. So they're, they're sensing the heat. They bring it back up to their Jacobson's organ. And uh, yeah. So they it basically tells them where that heat is coming from, how much heat it is, the size of the animal, all that stuff they can basically pick up. It's kind of cool. The snakes have some really interesting adaptations. So we talked about just a few adaptations of this snake that it has uh, to survive out in nature. Where do you think it would live? So I said they live in Africa, right? But whereabouts? Do you think they live in a forest? So let's see, forest has lots of trees, plants. Maybe a snake would love to climb those things, right? Snakes have muscles from their head all the way to their tail. So I think they could probably be found um, possibly, right? Climbing trees. Do you think they would be found in a pond? It's hard to tell because snakes here in Connecticut, we actually have water snakes. Some snakes can swim. Not all snakes like water. This particular species does not. They love dry, almost desert-like conditions, but they love being in meadows and fields. So uh, the grasslands, they love to be there. Why? Why would they want to be in those, those grasslands, those meadows, those fields? What's living there? that they would like to snack up. <laughs> yep, so some of you might be saying birds, mice, all the things I mentioned earlier, frogs perhaps. So it could be near a swamp wetland, in it, a wet area where frogs and salamanders and lizards go to get their water. These guys can eat all of those. So basically any of these, as far as snakes in general, you can find snakes in all of these areas. Um, and the reason is because they need water and they need food. There's water and food in all these places. Um, but yeah, so snakes are really, really cool animals. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you for checking Nico out. As you can see, he is he's a pretty cool guy. We love him. Uh, he lives right here in the animal care building where I work a lot. And um, when I'm out here working, he always pops up and has a little tongue going out, <laughs> looking for some food, but saying hello. Uh, he's quite, quite the nice friend to have. <laughs> Alright guys, have a great day. But I'm going to keep continuing with these videos. Uh, we'll just keep bringing out more and more animals, and we'll keep talking about their adaptations. The things that help them survive, and make them awesome. Just like you. Have a great day, guys!